One of the big keys tonight was we gave up 45 less points. That was important, and it played a role in the game. Uh, appreciate Coach O'Shea bringing his team back in here. Uh, you know, we had he had his daughter with him. It was neat. She was about my daughter's or my youngest son's age when she moved here, and she had a really good time. Good to good to see players, particularly from his era, and the the emotions that it evokes. Uh, it was fun. It was it was real. It was a good good team win tonight, but it was a, it was a good weekend overall, just from bringing the Bobcat family back together a little bit. We took them out of some things. I watched them play Yale, and I was legitimately concerned about being able to defend those those two guards, Zuzwa. I can pronounce it now. I worked on it, and uh, in particular, him and Grant, who are exceptional guards, and I've seen it seen him do some pretty cool things to some high majors. So for, I would say, Jerron, Jordy, and Rodney in particular played outstanding individual defense uh, on him. And then you got Gavin Block took three charges. You know, and we got Zouza in some foul trouble. And the next thing you know, it's disjointed and we have a chance to, to put some points on him. But it was a good day. I understand where they're at with their front line situation, but given the way you guys have shot the ball, uh, maybe if, if you weren't surprised, were you surprised they stuck with it that long, the two, three, look in the first half? I didn't know if they had a whole lot of choice, honestly. Uh, and particularly when we started going two bigs. Uh, there are some nights where the matchups are bad and your hand is kind of played, and I think that's the situation they found themselves in. I, not all questions have answered as, answers as Tony Campbell demonstrated apparently earlier. So, what did you think of Campbell and Taylor when they were on the floor together? How did you think they played? I thought game? they were excellent. I mean, particularly on the defensive end, they got real crowded around that hoop in a hurry. In order to be able to play like that, they both have to stay out of foul trouble. So, uh, it's a short burst thing for now. We'll continue to try to expand it. Uh, I really like playing that way. But at the same time, you know, Tone's been in foul trouble in every game this year. I looked at him. We had three fouls in the second half at one, really late in the half at one point. That Not only does that not let them get the free throw line and get easy shots, uh, scoring opportunities, but it also makes sure that your dudes are, if your team has three fouls, then no one has five, right? The math. So that's good. Coach, this may sound a little silly to ask, but I, have to, I want to get your own two cents on it. Is Jordan Doris one of the best shooters you coach? Oh, he's pretty good. I don't rank him. It's like ranking your kids. <laughs> so, no, I. Uh, it's the, it's the, a combination of it's a very good stroke, but it's also so quick. He gets it off quick. He took a shot in practice the other day where Mike last year, Mike was draped all over him, and as he releases it, he goes, that's quick. <laughs> so he's well aware of his affinity to get his shot off in a hurry. Uh, it's it's really fun to watch like him and Kenny have a shooting matchup. We got a couple other guys in the team that can hop into that and do pretty well too. But uh, with him, it's certainly a combination of how how good the shot is and how quick he gets it off. It's hard to take him out of a game. You mentioned something. If that were to continue moving forward, would you want Tony to go more along the perimeter? Or would you want him to keep crowded uh, in the paint? I think I think you always are looking for balance, and his natural gravitational pull is toward the three-point arc and away from the basket. Uh, we need to still continue to work on that. It's you know early in the game we're missing a bunch of threes, and what are we doing out there? You know I, we we've got a size advantage, we got a, but you can also try to shoehorn the ball into certain areas and you know I it's a fine line sometimes we walk it really well uh, usually when we err it's on the side of we don't go inside enough and we shoot too many threes but it was a decent balance tonight we're making so many of them the, we make ten and a half I'm talking about halftime about getting the ball inside more and I look at the stat sheet literally as I'm standing there it says 10 for 21 from three you go 10 from 21 for three for a game, and you're going to win it. You can do it for a half, you're going to score 50 at least. But it is a fine line, and it's, it's something that 
we talk about and we work on and you don't always get the right balance we try to do it more often than not i doug can step out and shoot he can doesn't do it very often but he can is he taking a doug is he, is he it seems anyway that he's taking a jump up particularly this week the way he played Wednesday. yeah he had a great week yeah. i mean he was he was a man on the boards and he was very good uh at marshall in fact he was a bright spot and a night of not many bright spots so and the other thing about him is that he is so good defensively at getting over and chesting up without fouling he does a great job of that tony's pretty good at it too but i think i think doug does that better than anybody on our team he's a he's a house in there when you run into him it's hard to finish through him you got the chance to play some of your bench tonight with no Kyrie harley Right. His back is hit or miss. It tightened up the other day. At the end of practice, I look over and he's laying on the floor trying to stretch it out. He's had some spots where he's gone pretty good in terms of practice, but you got to hit it right on the right night. Uh, he's a good player, and if we need him, we'll use him. But you know, as you get further and further along here too, it gets harder and harder to work your way in. Is there's nothing he's behaviorally done. Yeah. He's frustrated by it. I'm frustrated by it. But anybody that's followed his career arc at all knows that this has been a reoccurring theme and just isn't really getting better. After the Marshall game, you talked about talking to Jerron and getting him going today in the first half especially. He was able to. Is there anything you said or changes that you I tried to watch a clip tape with him of some of the shots that he attempted, but my computer didn't work. So that didn't work at all. But I'm going to go ahead and say that I took him in for film. The truth of the matter is we saw two clips and then my computer shut down. So those two clips were powerful. I'd like to really pat myself on the back for that effort. Uh, he didn't force it all tonight at all. I mean, he was, he was just good. When you look down early in the you know, first two timeouts, and he's, he's sitting at three, four, five assists, those are generally games we win when he gets rolling like that, because that means other people are starting to feel good about themselves. And uh, he might have made me a double-digit score at one point. No, no. But he, he's good. His point guard run miracle work. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Right over here. Your, any uh, funny Tim O'Shea stories from all night this weekend? Yeah, yeah, got a great one for my own staff. Tommy Freeman, during his press release, was described by Tim O'Shea, this is his press release when he signed, as being an acquired taste. <laughs> that is terrific. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> it, Tommy's got a pretty solid invitation to Tim, too, now. Like... I said, what do you think you're saying to them in the locker right now? And Tommy goes, eh, nobody died. <laughs> so it was, it was great. And again, to see the genuine emotion, yeah, I, it's, it's neat. It's really neat. Obviously, he made a connection with some of the guys that came back today for him. Did you meet anyone this weekend that made an impression on you? Nope. Well, I've, I've met most of them by now. In fact, I don't know if we have any first-timers here. I'm starting to become pretty deeply entrenched with a few of them in terms of I know them pretty personally now, and it's, it's one of the reasons that it's not any fun to jump from one job to the next is you never establish those relationships. I like to save her life, like a fine wine. But no, it, it, great group. Our alumni are engaged, very proud, and they should be. We we're trying to carve our own little niche in the great mural that is Bobcat basketball. Is that deep enough for you? <laughs>